I'm all in. Are you? Hello, everybody. My name is Domovex, Near Mint Condition Project Manager and Comic Releases Assistant Editor, and I'm here to talk about DC's brand new All In Initiative, take a deep dive and investigate the solicitations that were recently lifted from embargo for the 2024 October month period, and my overall thoughts on the relaunch, what it means for DC, and much more. But before we get into that, be sure to smash that like button and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any news updates, including release date updates, and much more. And I wanted to say a couple of things before I get into the video, the first of which is a super big thank you for 300 subscribers, which returning from my short hiatus, it's been a lot more fruitful than I thought it would ever be in my life. And we're literally less than 200 subscribers away right now from 500 subscribers, which means I get more perks and everything else of the sort for YouTube. And my goal is to hit that by the middle of next month, which is around August 15th, 16th. So anywhere in that meantime or that time frame, I want to be able to reach that. So if you're new and you love comics and pop culture content, be sure to hit that subscribe button so I can get closer to achieving that goal. Next is that you can find the documentation of this on my website, Comic Releases, for the DC Comics October 2024 DC Connect issue 51 product, which is in the channel description below. So that's it for the PSA, let's talk about DC. So what is DC All In? This is part of a brand new relaunch initiative that former DC Brain Trust Scott Snyder and current architect Joshua Williamson who is writing Green Arrow, Superman and Batman and Robin at the time of this recording have been planning for the last couple of months if not years. This is essentially another comics line-wide jumping on point not too far off from Dawn of DC which was last year's initiative to get both brand new and current readers continuously invested into the stories that DC is publishing out every single week. In his newsletter, Scott Snyder talked about when he left DC back in 2020 after the Dark Knight's death metal event. There were some plans to do some more, but he wanted to do something that was indie, that wasn't superhero. And Williamson and him had a couple of stories, and he had thoughts of possibly creating something down the line. But he gave himself a break to do those independent projects, some of which you've seen at Dark Horse, Comixology, Exclusives, and so on. But the thing is, he realized that there was some big, there was this big cultural conversation. Everyone is down on superheroes because Endgame had just finished. It felt like superheroes were over. This was the end of a period and point in time of we love the big capes and we were moving to something else. And he was super frustrated at the cultural landscape and the mindset. So for him to see this, he decided to phone in to Josh and started talking about, could we do a big initiative that could not only enhance the stories that they were already telling, but reclaim the spot of being the pop culture icons that they were meant to be and supposed to be. And the phrase kept going back to them. All in. What if we go all in? And this is where it starts. Now, Absolute Power is in the middle of its own thing. We have Amanda Waller reigning supreme against the Meta Humans with the Trinity of Evil that is failsafe and the rest and the DC universe is currently going through those bits right now so if you're not catching up on absolute power what are you doing it's Mark Wade and Dan Mora what else could I say so in the wake of this current crossover event is a new one shot called DC all in number one and at 64 pages and 499 this is meant to be the jumping on point for new readers to lock into. Very similar to the DC Universe Rebirth 299 80 pager that Jeff Johns, Ivan Reyes, Phil Jimenez, and Gary Frank. Now, you need to read this one shot before it trickles into other titles. And just like DC Rebirth issue number one, 
I actually expect this to be collected into a deluxe edition sem separate from other titles like the Rebirth one-shot was collected uh, so many years ago from oversized hardcover like I aforementioned to the two Rebirth omnibuses. We got two Rebirth omnibuses of all of the brand new number ones which I actually still find super interesting that they printed out and that I was considering buying from until a friend of mine told me it's stupid to collect those because it's just an anthology of number ones. Why wouldn't you just read that in an omnibus of something else? But nonetheless, this is the thing that you want to read and get into before anything else. Scott Snyder and Joshua Williamson, like I said, are planning the whole entire initiative. And by that standpoint, they are also writing the one shot. Daniel Samper, who is currently on Wonder Woman, or was currently on Wonder Woman, I should say. Tony S. Daniel is doing the fill-ins for the Absolute tie-in issues. He is drawing the special one-shot for this brand new initiative. And Wes Craig, yes, the Wes Craig of Deadly Class, and most recently Kaya, is also joining him as well. So... This is going to be a one-shot that you will need to read, you will need to pick up, and for 64 pages, $4.99, that is a banger of a price point per page count, and I think you guys should get on it. Now, springing out from Absolute Power 1 through 4 and this DC All-In one-shot comes a brand new universe. The Absolute Universe, which does appear to be DC's answer to the... Ultimate Universe that Jonathan Hickman launched back last year in Ultimate Invasion. And now we have titles such as Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate Black Panther, Ultimate X-Men, and Ultimates. So this is what we've got for Absolute Universe, of which Scott Snyder, Kelly Thompson, and Jason Aaron are respectively helming the trinity of Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. Scott Snyder, whose Batman run personally got me or helped me further get into comic books, is joined by Nick Dragata, who drew Fantastic Four, East of West, and most recently, PKJ's backups of action comics. They are going to tell a legend of the Batman without the mansion, the money, and the butler, 48 pages for $4.99. Next up, uh, Kelly Thompson is joined by Hayden Sherman, who is quickly rising up in the recognizable ranks of comic book artists. He recently did the Harley Quinn Night Terrors tie-in two-shot and the Dark Spaces Wildfire with Scott Snyder comic book to tell of a Wonder Woman reinventing her origin without the mascara, without her sisters, and without her mission of peace. Once again, 48 pages for $4.99. And last, but certainly not least, I guess depending on who you talk to, Jason Aaron and Raphael Sandoval, who was most recently on Action Comics, love that guy's art, are going to tell of a legend of Krypton, the son of Krypton, without the family, without a home, and without the fortress of solitude. Again, 48 pages, for $4.99. And this one is coming out in November. So this is coming out November 6th. That is an interesting thing that we have to note there. But once again, these are all coming out and it is going to be awesome. I am going to pick these up and review them as the series goes on. And hopefully you guys can join me in reading them as well. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the creators that are staying on their respective titles. There are seemingly new directions for some of the books, if not most of the books, that are coming out from the DC Universe. And part of it is keeping some of the creators that have been on these books for the last couple of years in tow and in line for what they have for the brand new All In Initiative. And we're starting off with the flagship title for DC. Now, don't fret if you are eventually going to be missing him in the Absolute Power tie-ins because fill-ins do happen and Jorge Jimenez isn't drawing those issues. But the superstar artist is rejoining Chip Zdarsky on Batman after the groundbreaking event. It will double ship in October with a new story arc called The Dying City and Carmine D. Gian Domenico, the guy on Flash and who recently did the Teeny Howard finale on Catwoman with Nine Lives. He is as solid and as 
bold of a storyteller as any artist is for filling. He will take over for issue 154. So Batman will still be in the hands of Chip Zdarsky once absolute power is all said and done. He's not going anywhere. We're going to continue on with Superman. Now, Superman is still being written by Joshua Williamson, but superstar artist Dan Mora, who was on Batman Superman World's Finest and Shazam most recently with Mark Wade, is joining the architect or current architect of the DC Universe, Joshua Williamson, for this brand new arc. It seems like going forward, he's going to be the main artist too. Now, if you want someone to fill in the role for Jamal Campbell. I don't think there is literally anyone better in the comics industry than Dan Mora to be able to take that job. It seems like there's going to be a brand new Superwoman. We have no idea who this Superwoman is, but she is on the cover. So uh, kudos to you, Joshua, for getting in with that as well. Now, next up, we've got Wonder Woman by Tom King. This is still going to be a Tom King-led book. Uh, we have no idea how long this is going to be, but if in any case of the sword, Daniel Samper is back drawing, and he's going to continue adventures with the Sovereign with what he's been building up there. So no changes, it looks like, for that title. And if in any case, if you guys are also interested in buying some of the covers that uh, the creators have done for Diana, they are putting out a uncovered one-shot that features all of those uh, covers as well. Poison Ivy, the sleeper hit book that has seemingly shocked the comic book world. Poison Ivy, my goodness, has been a hit. It's been awesome. And G. Willow Wilson is still on it. And Marcio Takara is still on it three years into this. And I hope it lasts forever, honestly. But I'm really happy for that creative team. And I'm really happy that we're going to be getting some more Poison Ivy stories with her going solo. Next up, we got Green Lantern issue number 16, written by none other than Jeremy Adams with Zarnmanico back on art. We're going to see things heat up with Green Lantern. And not only that, Philip Kennedy Johnson is joining him for a Green Lantern Civil Corps special. The War for the Fate of Green Lantern Corps starts here. And the rumors are that Philip Kennedy Johnson is going to be penning this Green Lantern Corps title, if that is even true right after he just did the Green Lantern War Journal, Jon Stewart Ongoing, which lasted up to 12 issues. Uh, hopefully this these books can last in as well. Next up, we got Green Arrow, issue 350. Joshua Williamson is still penning the title, but he is handing it off to Chris Condon. And the reason to why I put this into the continuing is that he's also writing the annual. So Williamson and Isaacs, and they're doing the annual Green Arrow issue 350 is a continuation of uh, those sorts. So Chris Khan is going to take over. And when he does, I'm going to talk about it next month. Simon Sparrier also isn't leaving either. The man who wrote the entire Kurt Legion David Holler's saga for the Krakoan era of X-Men is continuing his run on Flash. I really like the first arc and what he brought to this title, sort of the weird, horrific scientific elements that he's done with Wally. So kudos to Sai for continuing this on. I, I love his writing, even if a bit at times, sometimes like, I know the confusion gets there, but I like his writing a lot. I'm really, really happy that he gets to continue on with Flash. And Vasco Georgiev is joining him on the interiors on the switch from Ramon K. Perez, who was on the second arc of Flash. Kelly Thompson continues her bombastic Birds of Prey run with a brand new arc starting at issue 14. Sammy Bossery is going to join her. Still no Leo Romero on the interiors, but Sammy Bossery is a pretty decent artist in his own right. I liked what he did with Power Girl. He's going to be awesome. I cannot wait to see what they have set up in store for bop 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 to the top and as if there was any question about this mark wade is not going to be doing world's finest with dan moore for the time being but adrian gutierrez is filling in he has been he, he will be filling in uh for the last for the next couple of issues as well 31 i believe is also drawn by him uh, and this is going to continue the reign of terror from Eclipso as Wade continues his spin on these Silver Age adventures of the characters. 
Power Girl by Leia Williams is also continuing. We're now on issue 14. I love Adriana Mello. And if she is the continuing artist on this ongoing, well, I think that's going to be super strong for the title and super strong for Leia as well. I think it's gonna it's a perfect match. I can't wait to see what Williams is going to bring with her next adventures in Power Girl's world. Shazam by Josie Campbell is also continuing with Manuela Luca Bikino, who is also one of my favorite artists uh, of all time. I love her interiors, and I still love that they get to, are going to continue writing the adventures of Billy, Mary, Freddy, and the rest of the gang. Now let's go ahead and go on to new creative teams on flagship titles. This is for all of the brand new teams that are exclusively on their books, some of which I didn't see coming, and let's go ahead and get into it. The first is Mark Wade and Mariko Tamaki are taking over Action Comics Weekly. This is going to star Clayton Henry on art and Skylar Patridge, and I hope that this continues into a point where we get to see a Kara zor book, whether she takes over action full time or whether she has her own book. I am not the biggest fan of Clayton Henry, admittedly. His out of proportion chest to heads are simply not for me. But that being said, I am really happy that Mark Wade gets to take his own spin on action. It seems, honestly, it seems right it doesn't, it feels off if he's not writing Superman somehow. I love Wade's version of Superman. One of my favorites, if not my favorite, interpretation of the character in any publishing media. I'm really excited to see what this team can do as Superman Superstars continues in Action Comics. Now this was a title that I did not foresee coming. I legitimately was floored when I saw this. Tom Taylor is taking over for Rom V on Detective Comics, and after Rom V completely blew my expectations out of the water and some more with his run, Taylor is taking over with Mikhail Yannon, who I legitimately hope will be the last of the delays for Justice Society of America issues 11 and 12. We'll have to see how this team does. I did really like Tom Taylor's one-shot in Tomasi run of Detective Comics. I hope he can continue that quality here. So we'll have to see what he has prepped up for the Batman of Gotham. Next up, we got Nightwing. Nightwing, another Taylor book that is being left in the dust because he just finished, or is going to finish his wrap up on Nightwing on issue 118. Dan Waters is taking over with Dexter Soy on art. I love Dexter Soy art. Someone who's not immune to the Bat family treatment either with Red Hood and also Batman and the Outsiders. So this is not a stranger to the people associated with Batman. I am actually very interested to see what will be going on uh, with Dick Grayson in the upcoming future. This is, this is definitely going to be interesting to see how the handoff is from the Fallen Sun to the brand new creative team. Harley Quinn also gets a new creative team. Teeny Howard is off of both Harley Quinn and Catwoman, the latter of which I'll get to in a second. Elliot Kalan is going to take over the book. He is a fantastic and underrated writer, I think. I love The Daily Show. It's one of my favorite nightly talk shows that I always enjoy listening to and having a good laugh. They've got really amazing writers over there, and of course, Jon Stewart is amazing as always. But Elliot Kalan was one of the former writers for The Daily Show, and he he is really, really good at bringing out the comedic punches, as I think any writer on The Daily Show should be and probably will be. And Mindy Lee is going to take over as well. All the Harley Quinn fans, I think, should be very happy right now with uh, the, the character choice and also the creative team. Catwoman is up next with issue 69. Nice. Selena Kyle is now being written by Tarun Gronbeck. Tarun Gronbeck, who is writing Red Sonja, is actually writing a pretty good Red Sonja, I'd argue, over at Dynamite. A friend of the channels at NMC. She is spectacular and fun to listen to as always. And she is joined by Fabiana Mascolo on the art as well. Mascolo, I'm not really familiar with a lot of her art, but I know that she did a Cyberpunk 2077 series not to 
uh, not too long ago. So this is this is very interested to see what they have going on there with Catwoman. Um, and like I said, brand new creative team. Let's see how they do uh, with the passing of the baton from Teeny Howard to Torun Grombeck. Now this is one I did not see coming at all, a transition I did not see coming at all, and that is Titans. John Lehman is now penning Titans, which I did not foresee coming at all. I thought that Taylor was going to have a couple more arcs on Titans before he sort of dumped it off to the next. And if you would have asked me back in 2018 who I would want to take over a Titans book, I actually would have said Tom Taylor, but now, it feels like that weird pitch and fever dream is gone, and after three arcs of Titans, we have something completely different. Pete Woods is going to be joining John Lehman. John Lehman, very well known for Chu. I am very interested to see what he does with the team. This is not, this is again, not someone that I would have immediately drawn up for on the book, but very interested to see what he's got going on there. Batman and Robin now is being written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, another creator that I did not foresee coming to shift and change up that dynamic as well. Philip Kennedy Johnson is joined by Javier Fernandez to take over the Batman and Son duties on art. And I actually really like this. I loved his art on Nightwing in that third arc of Tim Seeley's Rebirth run, where they are facing against Deathwing and Professor Pig. It's great Morrisonian BNR vibes, and I hope we get to see some more of that in Batman and Robin. And lastly, Brave and the Bold continues. This is your classic creators doing Batman stories in this sort of anthology sense of mind. So that is that as far as brand new creative teams on titles. Now, Let's talk about new books for a real quick minute because we do have a couple of books that were in these solicitations uh, that I want to talk about real quick that are brand new. And the first one is Batman and Robin Year One by the legendary tag team duo of Mark Wade and Chris Samney. That same team brought us Daredevil, my favorite run of Daredevil. Mark Wade said that he had a lot of things to say about Dick Grayson and Mark Wade has already said a lot about the universes that he's written for. So getting to see Mark Wade and Chris Samney do some storytelling and lay it out in all fashion, I'm all down here for. Which is kind of weird. I, I thought that they would be on a world's finest book together, sort of build this world's finest universe. But since we're sort of gearing away from that, I, I guess Mark Wade, I guess Mark Wade is, you know, he's doing this. And I actually am very intrigued to see what, what's going on there. Consider me signed in. I know that it's $5 for 32 pages, but I do not care. This is going to be awesome. It is a team that I trust from the heart downwards and everywhere. So Samney, Wade, you got my money right here. Next up is Batman Full Moon by Rodney Barnes and Stevan Subic. Subic, who was recently on the year one Riddler story that he did with Paul Dano, who is a lot more of a faceted writer than I thought he was. Uh, this is a Gotham gory horror story, black label, glow in the dark covers. It's got everything, and also it's Halloween, man. You gotta you gotta punch it out for all the horror. So this is a book that you must need and must get if you are a big Batman fan and you love the creepiness and the elements of the bat. And last but not least, uh, Poison Ivy and Swamp Thing, Feral Trees by Willow, uh, G. Willow Wilson and Mike Perkins. Uh, this is going to be a perfect one-shot if you want to give out a comic book to a friend of yours who's into Halloween. Getting to see those two team up is always a treat. And also, it's Halloween, man. But get in the spirit. This book is perfect for that. You all know that I work for ComicReleases.com. And for those of you wondering what on earth it is and why I keep mentioning it all the time to the start of every video, to the intro of every interview I've done and I've been on, it's the website that I work for that is your one-stop shop for all up-to-date release dates on the omnibuses, epic collections, hardcovers, special editions of collected editions, and much more for the super duper uber collector. We also have documented solicitations for Marvel, DC, Image, Boom Studios, IDW, Dark Horse, and Titan. 
releasing every single month so you are up to date on all comics and graphic novels that are coming out for that pre-order period. Now, if you join our Patreon, which is only at $2 a month, it not only helps me and Webhead, who I run the website with, to keep up the server and have it running, you also get a watch list to document all of your books so that you can track them whenever solicitations go live. It's in-depth, it's really cool, and if there's a bug or something that we can improve on on the site, please let us know how we can fix this via contact information on the forum or our Discord server. Once again, that's Comic Releases for more information. Oh my goodness, I, I know that this video is a little bit long, guys, but if you guys bore, bore with me for this whole entire time, I really appreciate it to get to talk about what my thoughts are on DC's all in initiative and being able to talk about that with all of you super super fun stuff and i will do more coverage as the issues go out and hopefully sometime next year i'll have a video on where to start reading dc comics in the year 2025 but before that be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're brand new and hit that notification bell so that you know whenever i decide to upload a brand new video and whenever i go live but until then you be you Take care and have a great rest of the day wherever you are.